Okay, one, two, one, two, testing. Hello, how are we? Good, good, good. Well, welcome to well my, to my living room. Welcome to my house. This is uh, isn't, isn't it gorgeous? Um, my name's Tom. Well, actually, when we were looking around the room earlier on, uh, we looked at the chairs and we thought it looks a bit it looks a bit formal. Looks a bit like a, a wedding situation, but. Uh, I think it's actually it's quite nice because it looks like a school assembly hall in some ways. So we'll we'll use that for the for the for the theme of the play. Uh, a warm welcome uh, to Wolverhampton uh, Grand's production of the History Boys happening in February of next year. Really exciting to do this presentation today. Um, to let you know what's going to happen, we're going to just have a little. I'll chat briefly about the background of the play. Uh, what it's about, some of the themes going through it. And then I'm going to have a quick chat with uh, the Artistic Director and Chief Executive of The Grand, Mr. Adrian Jackson, will come up and we'll have a little interview. Think of it as a kind of a Wolverhampton one show, if you like. And I, I, I'll be the older, grisly Matt Baker character and I'll bring people up and we'll have a little chat. Um, after that, we'll talk to some of the some of the actors. We're really pleased to have um, all the act most of the actors here this evening and we'll have a little chat with, with those as well. History Boys. Um, it's a wonderful... I, I saw History Boys a long time ago. I think we've all seen the film as well. It's it's one of those pieces that... It's just beautifully funny. It's an, uh, Alan Bennett, is, 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 he writes so well, so so clearly and concisely and sharply, and History Boys has got all of those elements in there. I think a lot of people have a misconception about the play. They think it's set in a, in, in a posh school, and, and it's not. It's set in a state grammar school in, in Sheffield, um, very similar to the school that Alan Bennett went to in, in Leeds. So it, it's just a state school, um, which gives it more more power, I think. Set in the early 80s, and uh, f production, the first production was in 2004 uh, in, the, in the West End, moved to, the, to Broadway in 2006. Essentially, it's about... Uh, it's a it's about a group of students, very eclectically different, diverse group of students, who are studying for their Oxbridge exams, um, and and the beauty uh, it's it's so lovely because you, you have a, a quite a large group for a play, quite a large group of young actors who really get a chance to be to be a main part of this this story arc. Through their education, they they are they're given tuition by three very different teachers. And we're going to be talking. We're lucky enough to be talking to the actors playing those teachers. We've got Hector, who, strangely enough, Hector is is not a character that Alan Bennett n knew or remembers. He, he, he has said in interviews that Hector is a character that he he made up from conversations with 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 other other people, other other teachers. So uh, Hector is a fabulous character, a very uh, unconventional, shall we say, uh, but again, beautifully written. Um, Irwin, the character of Irwin, who is a, the, the young supply teacher who comes in. Alan Bennett has said that he's based his own experiences on... Um, on Irwin, because Alan Bennett did a degree, and as part of that, he had to do uh, some teaching practice. And so, a lot of Irwin is is from his own experiences. And Mrs. Lintot um, is a teacher that he remembers well from his schooling days as well. So that is an actual an actual character from from his memory. Doing this play as as a, um, a as an in-house production is, is, is perfect in a, in a way, well, in two ways, really, because, first of all, because it's an Alan Bennett play, there are very few contemporary writers who, who can, well, nothing guarantees box office, but you put Alan Bennett's name on there, Alan Akebourne, John Godber, it's a great start. Aside from that, and equally important, is, is the way that this play, and I know that we're going to talk to Adrian later about, about the way that the community uh, is, 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 is used and brought into the productions. This is now the, the third in-house production at the, um, at the Grand Theatre. And I know for this particular one, um, and we'll talk about this later, but I know the boys have been uh, at a school in the last few days, is that right? Um, the Thorns Academy, is that right, in Bri Briley Hill? And as from what I've heard, it's been an amazing experience because... Um, They've helped each other. I know the boys at school have probably really helped in in, in the research and performances that you're going to see on stage. And also, and Adrian will talk more about this, but uh, a, a very useful and a good way of using the school is that it can be used, um, I believe some filming has been done there, uh, so in between the scenes there's going to be film backdrops of, 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 the, of the school. So a great way of, of bringing in um, the community. 
So I would like to invite the Chief Executive and Artistic Director, Mr. Adrian Jackson, to, to come up. He said he was going to do a little dance as he came down, but I don't think that's going to happen. No, no, don't. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Adrian. Hello. Hi, this, is where we, this is where we take the, uh, the one-show seating. So, Adrian, I, I'm, I'm told that uh, the Grand Theatre has, a, has, has a, what a very rich reputation for uh, in-house productions, productions that are made by, by the theatre themselves, and that, that went on for a long, long time and stopped around 40 years ago. Uh, you took over the, the Grand in 2015. Now, this is now your, your third in-house production, started off with Brassed Off, the extraordinary, another extraordinary community-based production. Uh, Ladies' Day last year, and now History Boys. How how important is it to you and the Grand to produce in-house? Um, it's essential, really. I, th I think uh, j just to clarify, the the, the Grand Theatre when it opened 125 years ago was a producing house, which basically means that they decided what to do when to do it and cast it and devise the whole show themselves. When the theatre progressed into the 1950s and 60s, it had its own repertory company and built up a massive reputation for uh, great drama and, and great drama seasons. And the, th the theatre closed at the end of the 70s, reopened in the early 80s as a receiving house, which basically means that we receive shows from other producers and play them for a week or two weeks, and then they go off and move somewhere else. But for me, as a creative, I wanted to take the theatre back to where it started and to make sure that we were able to put on dramas and, and hopefully eventually musicals, especially for Wolverhampton, and to involve our community as well, because the Grand Theatre is a, you know, it's a fantastic theatre and it belongs to the people. And it's my job to make sure we get as many people into that theatre as possible, and particularly young people and members of the community. It's absolutely crucial. So I wanted to, it was kind of on my mission, to make sure that we return the grand in part to a producing house. Um, it's a bit more risky, um, because obviously everything now is, is on my shoulders or on the theatre's shoulders. But to be honest with you, if you work in theatre, you, you haven't got to be too f afraid of risk. If you are, you're in the wrong uh, job. It's something that I'm, I'm very excited about, and the History Boys, as Thomas said, is just a fantastic title. And just going back to, to the History Boys, how have you... We, we, we touched on the, the link with the school. Mm. So can you just uh, explain a little bit more about how you've worked with the school and what's gone on um, with that? Yeah, I mean, you mentioned about the community involvement of, in Brastoff. We, we had a, a local brass band, we had a community ensemble. Uh, and we had some terrific uh, response from uh, the, the people from the community who supported the professional cast we had. We did the same with Ladies' Day, which was our second production. And when I met with uh, Jack Ryder, our director, we, we were trying to work a way through how we can involve the community in uh, the History Boys, because it's not quite so easy to bring in people to the classroom because it's so specific and, 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 and because the writing is so specific. So Jack came up with this idea to, uh, as Tom uh, said earlier on, to, to film and to use projection. And I won't give too much away because you've got to come and see it really to, to get the full effect. But we, we are going to take the show on this journey with uh, and scene changes and what have you with uh, projection and with real life scenes and uh, and we approached Thorns Academy in Briley Hill and they were tremendous really they just jumped at the chance to work with us and, and we've had a great time and I was just talking to the the, the principal Manny who's here um, w the school selected 30 students to work with our cast who you'll meet in a few moments and, and they were just tricky they were an absolute credit to the school I have to say they were just so fantastic and, and these young people were engaging so, so beautifully with our cast. And I think that that's what it's all about. You know, it's about giving these young people an experience. And I always relate it to my own experience because I started as a kid and my very first experience was at the Grand Theatre at the age of 12. And that started my career. And, and, and I always think, you know, I never forget that. So to bring these young people in, uh, and although they won't be live on stage, they will be in every performance in a slightly different way. So, so we, we can't, you know, it's Jack's idea really to, to do it that way, to make sure we still have that community involvement. And, and 
choosing the play obviously is is, is crucial. What, yeah. Why why did you choose the History Boys? What what was it about that play that you thought would would work? We we went through a number of titles and 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 you know Brassed Off, Ladies Day. We needed something very different and very contrasting to those two pieces. And I saw uh, the History Boys when it first opened, and again, I, it, it's a sh it's a play that always sat in my head, and 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 it's a big cast, you know, for a, for a, a, a a new producing house, if you like, a, a cast of twelve. It's quite a big big cast to take, but we we thought it's the right stepping stone for the grand. It's a little bit cutting edge. It's a little bit, you know, there's a, it's it's sensitive. It's got all sorts of emotions in this play. And it just felt right, really. And uh, quite a few of the members of staff wanted to do it as well. So I was under a little bit of pressure from uh, one or two people. Um, but, yeah, it's perfect choice. Lovely. Thank you very much, Adrian Gentleman. Uh, Adrian Jackson, ladies and gentlemen, thank, thank you, you very much. Thanks very much. Thank you. <laughs> thank you, Adrian. Somebody I didn't mention in the, in the cast as well who, who can't be here tonight is uh, Geoffrey Holland, who plays the, the head teacher. Uh, I know Geoffrey a little bit because we went to the same school uh, slightly different years, obviously a couple of years difference. That school was a boys' grammar school in Walsall, just just down the road from here. Uh, so I'm intrigued to see uh, who Geoffrey is inspired by from that particular experience. Okay, time to talk to some some actors. Um, I'd I'd like to introduce uh, three three of the lead actors today. So could I ask to come on stage, please? Could we have uh, Ian Redford playing Hector? Where are you, Ian? You. Come on up. Come and take a seat. <laughs> Victoria Carland, playing Mrs. Lintot. And Lee Comley, playing Irwin. Thank you for all sitting together, guys. That's great. So, Ian, I'm not going to read out all, the, all your credits because it's, it, it's, it's a very long list and an impressive list. But I, I would like to just, as I look through the, the beautifully impressive amount of work that you've done, I noticed The Great Escape was on there. Uh, now that's, I, I mean, were you, a, were you a baby when you did that? No, 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 <laughs> this was a remake of The Great Escape uh, that was done for Thanksgiving in America and we shot it in Yugoslavia and it was in very bad taste because it, it said The Great Escape, The Final Solution, which was appalling. Uh, and I played the Donald Pleasant's part out there. It was actually rather good fun and uh, there were a lot of English actors out there and uh, some very good English actors out there. So it was a, it was a, a remake. Okay, okay, good, good, good. Yeah, that, that, yeah, that makes sense now. Yeah. So, history boys, Hector. Tell us, tell, tell us about, um, tell us about about Hector. How do you, how you, how do you approach a character? He's very uh, multi-layered. One, one might say. Uh, how, how do you go about well, creating? Well, uh, the first thing, sounds <laughs> trite, this, but you read the script over and over and over and over again to get some impression. I still have a very clear impression of Richard Griffiths playing it in, in, on stage. <coughs> and so I have a sort of, a sort of idea of getting rid of that. But I also noticed that another very good actor called Stephen Moore played it as well, who recently died. So, and I also have, a, I've had a lifelong interest in education myself. I had an amazing uh, teacher who was not unlike Hector, not as old as Hector, he was quite young. But he gave me, uh, he opened the door for me to be an actor. And he taught by very unconventional ways. So to give you an idea, um, we used to have a thing at our school, it was a grammar school, prefects were allowed to line the people up against a wall. So you had to face the wall. And he thought this was appalling. So he spent one lunch hour, this is a teacher, lined up against the wall and the headmaster said Mr. Terrell what are you doing? He said I think this is ridiculous what this is just too and he got it stopped <coughs> and he changed a load of things and he took me to the theatre I saw plays uh, I had a very kind of very good personal relationship with this man which um, not unlike the relationship that Hector has with his uh, with the students so I would start usually from there really um, but also you know he's obviously a, a deeply, deeply unconventional human being. But that scene with um, uh, talking about the drummer boy, uh, there's a scene when he talks about literature and his love of literature, um, and the wit that Bennett has given him, the humour, uh, and they obviously adore him. The kids adore him. They, I mean, you know, they, they have a very good relationship mm. with him. You know, and, and the kind of relationship 
that they're not allowed to have nowadays in schools. I mean, the school that you went to, I went to, I'm sure you had a teacher or whatever. They're not allowed to do that anymore. Mm. So, um, and I, I just think it's, it's, it's the humanity of him, the fact that, you know, he enforced the thing, only connect, he connects with people. And he has a love and he has a dis, uh, he'd obviously been around long enough to have a healthy distaste of the changes in the educational system that Erwin represents coming up, you know, changing and subverting things. That's why we're all, you know, cursed with having Simon Sharma on television now. Because of, you know, shifting it around, making it interesting, rather than actually working with the material that you're working with, which are the kids. So that's how I would, would start from it. But I mean, I have to say, it's the same thing over and over again. Going back to the text, going back to the text, and something will emerge. I don't want to superimpose anything on him because my Hector is not going to be Richard Griffith's Hector or Stephen Moore's Hector. It's going to be mine. It could be something that will come out of whatever is in me that is related to that. And I do have a great passion about <coughs> education. I think it's fundamental for the rest of people's lives. I mean, you get scarred at school by teachers. You get scarred at school by other people. And you, and you come away thinking you're sick or stupid or whatever. And we're not. You know, that's not what education should be. Um, I'll stop in a minute. Um, but there is just one more thing. If anybody has TED Talks, watch the TED Talk of Sir Ken Robinson on education. It's absolutely brilliant. And he talks about Gillian Lynn, who was a choreographer to choreograph cats. And apparently she suffered from ADHD when she was at school. And they, they, they wouldn't have diagnosed it then as ADHD. And some psychiatrist said, there's nothing wrong with her. She's a dancer. Send her to dance school. And she said, when I walked through the, the doors of the dance school, I felt at home. Because when I moved, I thought. And that's the thing, you know, this play is about what's the point of education. Not everybody thinks the same way. And passing an exam doesn't necessarily make you into a better human being. And I think that's where Hector's passion is for. It's about that poem. It's about what that means, what that represents. And I think that's such a beautiful, touching scene. So, yeah, there's loads of stuff. He's a bit of a rogue, of course. <laughs> Who isn't? <laughs> and and he's, he is the kind of teacher, for all his dubious uh, goings-on on motorbikes, he is, he is the kind of teacher that you remember and, 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 and probably have, has a huge effect on, on the pupils. I think we all, we've probably all had a teacher at school like that. Um, and for all the unconventionality, he, he makes a mark. And, and as you say, going back to the script, what, what a script to go back to as well that you can... Thank you very much, Ian. Um, Victoria Carling, uh, you're playing Hello. Mrs. Lynn Todd. Are you, are you on, Victoria? That works. Are you? Yes. Oh, there you go. I'm on. Um, <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> so I think we'll just, we'll just leave it there, shall we? We'll just, uh, <laughs> I was having a chat with, um, with Victoria just a few minutes ago. Uh, <laughs> and you, Victoria lives in France, which is, I, I know this has nothing to do with, we'll get back to History Boys in a second, but uh, so we were having a sort of, a, you were talking in French and I was kind of replying oh, a little bit, course. but, but <laughs> extraordinary that, you know, you, th that you can do this in this wonderful job. You can live anywhere in the world and come and, come and do a play in Wolverhampton. I think it's, I think it's terrific. You wouldn't get a, a plumber to do your house who lived in Italy, would you? So it's just extraordinary. So you've, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> well, that's, no that's probably true. <laughs> so... No. Mrs. Lintot. Yes. Very much um, um, a, a, a woman in a man's world, would, would you say? Oh, uh, absolutely, yeah. And, and how, what kind of challenges does that give you to, to when you approach that kind of character? Because you're, very, you, you're fighting from the offset, aren't you? Well, the character is fighting this, this, this male dominance. Mm. How, how, how do I you approach I that? I think the thing about Mrs. Lintot is that she, it's not, it hasn't been an overt fight at all. I, I, it's sort of near the end when you realise just how not disabled she, she she feels by being a woman in this world, but uh, that she makes it clear that history is written by men. I mean, the the, the line that she has is, you know, history is a, a story of women following the men to clear up afterwards. Um, so she's she's quite a sort of warrior. Um, but but she's uh, it's beyond that really. She's just. She's humane in her way. She's not as inspirational as Hector, but she cares. And, and I suppose, I mean, there are many themes, aren't there? But w one of them, you could argue, is the, is the theme of gender role and gender stereotype. Which yeah. Do you think that, that 
that still goes on in the workplace today, in the educational workplace? Is that something which, which is relevant today? Wow. Um, I, I did do a bit of teaching once, actually. I was about to say I'm not qualified to answer that because I'm not a teacher, but I did. I taught at, um, uh, for about six months at a Young Offenders Institute, and, um, and it was all boys. And they had the upper hand. You had to be, you had to be very careful and, and have your wits about you. But I won't tell you the rudest story. Um, Please do. <laughs> really? <laughs> no, <Maybe>. thank you. <laughs> thank you <laughs> I'm very much. Shakes of the head from <laughs> the marketing department. There. Uh, Carry on. Uh, the nicest story, well, the sort of slightly weirder story was, was there was a guy who was being really, really helpful. Um, and on their uh, in their cell blocks, they've got a thing called a flimsy where you write down if they've been good or if they've been bad. Um, and you can also find out what they did. Um, I didn't want to know. Anyway, I said to this guy, you've been so helpful, I'm going to go and write in your flimsy. And he said, you know I'm a murderer, miss. <laughs> 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 and I, I thought, well, you've always been very nice to me. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so about women in education, I went to a, an all-women's college uh, when I was at university and I sort of feel proud of that now because I thought it was great that we were all women, uh, but I also slightly regret it not having been more mixed. I mean, w w it, it, it had a reputation for being a, a corridor full of mad women, basically. Um, I, d I can't see a problem anymore, to be honest with you. You know, I, I was, we had, we had one uh, female teacher at my school and I, I, felt, I felt sorry for her then because all the boys absolutely loved the one female that, that, that was there because it was the only one that, 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 they, they, had. that they could <laughs> you know, see or talk about. So, yeah. yeah. Victoria, thank you very much. Um, You're welcome. So, on, on the right, hello, Lee, Lee Comley. Hello. Uh, Lee, you, you, you may know the voice and, and the face from Midlands Central News, is that right? Yeah, get it right. Central, Central, Central News, yes. <laughs> The opposition, you the see, opposition, when you talk yes, about the yes, BBC. Yes. There we go. <laughs> so, uh, and I know you've, you've, you've done a lot of acting on, on TV and EastEnders, the, the various, yeah. various things. Yeah. How is this uh, challenge for you? How does that compare? And, and, and Irwin is, um, is almost, well, the hero in some ways of, of, of the piece. And, and how, how do you approach that? Almost kind of a reluctant hero, isn't he, in, in, in a way? Um, I mean, th this is, is an absolute dream role. You know, um, I came to acting a little bit later, so just the opportunity to be in involved in a show like this is just incredible. And what I love about Irwin is he's kind of a bit of a force of change, but as I say, kind of reluctantly. Mm -hmm. He's still trying to find his place in the world. He doesn't quite sit with the teachers and he doesn't quite sit with the boys. And uh, yeah, what a joy of a part to play. Yeah. Can we give Lee, Ian and Victoria a big round of applause? Thank you so much, guys. Thank you for coming up. I think we've got time. I would love to introduce you to the boys. So can I ask the boys to, to, to come up and, and, and if we do a kind of a... It's, it's, a bit like, it's a bit like a rugby photo, isn't it, this? I should have a ball in the middle there. <laughs> so would you like to just uh, introduce yourselves and the character you're playing um, and anything about the character if you want to chip in, but tell us who you are and who you're playing. Uh, I'm Fraser Hedfield, and I'm playing <coughs> Scripps, and I'm one of the boys. Uh, I'm uh, Dom Tracy, I'm playing Tims, uh, one of the boys. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Adonis Janico, I'm playing Crowther. <laughs> <laughs> I'm James Stenfield, I'm playing Lockwood, one of the boys. Oh. <laughs> you just wish somebody to say one of the girls, don't you, Patada? <laughs> Uh, I'm Aaron Bassi, I'm playing Akdar, one of the boys. Uh, I'm Jordan, I'm playing Dakin, who is also one of the boys. I'm Joe, I'm playing Rudge, who's one of the boys. I'm Tom Grant, I'm playing Posner, who's one of the boys. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, I, I, I know you've been working with, uh, with the boys at the school recently. How, how was that experience for you? So how has that helped in the, in the process? Oh, it was great. We got school dinners, which <laughs> was, was fantastic. No, but they were lovely at the school, really kind of welcoming. Uh, and we were all dressed in school uniform, going around the school, having bits of filming. Um, and the 30 kids that were with us were great. But the other kids that weren't completely sure who we are, just assumed we were schoolboys from <laughs> another school. <laughs> so we're definitely blending in. <laughs> yeah. and, and again, it's, it's a 
it's such a great example of Alan Bennett's writing, isn't it? He's so far ahead of his time that, that these boys are they're not just similar types, you know. There's there's all kinds of there's there's, there's a Muslim, there's a Jewish boy, there, there, there's sort of undercurrents of hidden sexuality going on there. There's there's a real diverse group of, of, of people here, which which makes the layers of the play, I think, just more interesting uh, and, and spot on, I think. So, guys, thank you so much for coming today. Um, and we really look forward to, to s watching you being boys as you've... <laughs> thank you, guys. Thank you very much. <laughs> we'll leave it there. Thank you so much for coming today. And uh, see you in February. Bye-bye. <laughs>